Interface. Bob the Canadian here. Welcome to this uh, live lesson. Uh, this is meant to be a practice listening lesson as well as a question and answer session for those of you that are learning English. Uh, if you look in the chat, you'll see that there is a link to a form that you can use to ask questions. I'm just going to check to make sure everything is working from a technical front in a moment. Uh, we will get started and I'll take the first question. I know there's a few of them uh, that are already there. Anyways, I'm Bob the Canadian. It is a nice summer night here in Canada. Um, as you can see, the grass behind me is green. Uh, we have had just a little bit of rain this week, so everything is a little bit happier. But I want to say welcome uh, to everyone who is here, uh, saying hi to everyone in the live stream. Uh, we're going to get started. I'm going to check to see if there is a question. I know there is because I checked earlier. Uh, so here we go. First question for those of you that are here to learn some English. Uh, Nick says, what would be a more casual say to hinder? I would say the best way to say that is to prevent someone um, or to, I guess you could say to block someone. So if you want to hinder me from taking a drink of my tea, I would say that you would try to prevent me from taking a sip of my tea. That would be, uh, that would be what I would say if I was to want to hinder someone. Um, I see people are complimenting me on my t-shirt. I did get a new t-shirt. Um, and I bought a blue one. I tend to almost always wear blue shirts. <laughs> so thank you for the compliment there. Um, someone asked in the chat what the topic was today. When we do these uh, Saturday night live stream lessons, um, there is no topic. Uh, I simply take questions uh, about the English language or about me uh, via the form and I try to uh, answer you as, as best as I possibly can. As some of you know, sometimes I give great answers and sometimes it's hard for me on the spot to come up with a good answer, but we try anyway. So again, welcome. Next question is from Anjnye, says, Hi Bob, my question is, could you, if you could reform the English spelling and make it more phonetic, would you? <laughs> I don't think I would. I know that English has some strange pronunciations. I know that English presents challenges for people who are learning the language, but I think if I had a choice, I would just leave it the way it is uh, because it is kind of a beautiful language the way it is. Next question is from Lolly Lolly. Uh, says, when we use sometime, sometimes, and sometime. Oh, let me give you, I'll try to give you three example sentences. So the first one uh, refers to um, an undetermined time in the future. So I could say, I will help you sometime with that. So sometime in the future, I will help you. Um, when you use sometimes with the S on the end, um, usually that refers to um, a repeated action. Like sometimes I have to take a drink while I'm doing my live stream. So sometimes refers to Sometimes I ride my bike outside. So it means every once in a while. And then the last one, some, and then a space, and then time, would be um, if you're referring to, um, if you need a little bit of time from someone. Like, could you give me some time tomorrow? Uh, I need to learn some English. Would you be able to give me some time? So there's a little space there. Hopefully that made sense, lolly lolly. We'll go from there. Next question is from Marta. Says, hi Bob, I'm Recife from Brazil. I hope you're well. What's the difference between do and make? And oh, so do and make. Um, so the simplest difference is in English, usually, not all the time, but usually when you make something, you take separate things and you put them together. And when you're done, you have something new. So you would make a doghouse or you would make supper, or you would make food to eat. So you're taking ingredients and you're making something. But when you do something, it's usually an activity, okay? Um, so I like to do puzzles, or I like to, um, what's another good one? I like to do the crossword puzzle in the paper. So try to remember that most of the time when we use the word make, you're taking things, and when you're done, you have something new. So. It's not the best description. It's a little more nuanced than that, but that is the description. 
Uh, next question is from Cheng. Cheng says, what's the difference, what is the difference between turnpikes and freeways? Freeways are free and turnpikes are not. Are they both counted as highways? So in Canada, we don't call, so first of all, you're correct. Um, a highway or freeway is free. A turnpike, or in Canada, we call them toll roads, uh, are not free. Uh, so, um, but would they both be considered highways? Yes. So in Ontario, we have um, the 407 is a toll road, T-O-L-L, -L, a toll road. So you pay to use the 407, that's the name of the highway. But in general, we would still call it a highway. So yes, that's a great question. Uh, in the United States, they tend, in some states, to call them turnpikes. Uh, next one from Lolly. Lolly Lolly says, please, what is the difference between remind and remember? So, and then merci, Bob, pas de problème. Um, so when you remind someone, it's when you help them remember. So if you um, have a child who's going to school and they forgot their backpack, you would remind them to take their backpack. You would want the child to remember to take their backpack. So when you remind, it's you're reminding someone else. You're helping them to remember. Uh, that's what. That's how that would work. Let me just when check. You remind some Looks like the stream is working good. Uh, questions are coming in pretty fast. That's awesome. Uh, please do remember that sometimes I don't get through all the questions. I know last week a few people didn't get their question answered. I'm sorry about that. Um, I only have so much time uh, in my day to help, so I help as much as I can. Um, you can help though if you're new here by clicking subscribe and giving me a thumbs up on the video. I like that. It makes me feel good. Uh, let's see. Cheng says, from what I understand, overpasses are roads for either people or cars and footbridges are for foot traffic only. Am I correct? Is footbridge used in Canada? Yes. So an overpass is a road that goes over usually a highway or another road and it's generally used for cars. It can have a sidewalk for people and animals as well. Um, but a footbridge, and we do use that in Canada, is only for walking. So sometimes we do have footbridges that go across. Um, let's see. Renata says, let's see here. Renata says, Renata Mayumi says, I'll shoot the question straight away. Can the Canadian expressions be used in the US and vice versa? So if you're watching my other channel where I do short one minute lessons, all of those phrases are American and Canadian. Um, I don't generally teach um, phrases that are only Canadian. I usually stick to mostly Canadian and American. So if you are learning English from me, you will not learn anything wrong. Everything you learn, you could use in the United States. Um, it's very easy for me to do that though, because Canadian English and American English are very, very similar in terms of our vocabulary and in terms of our phrases. Um, the reason it's very similar is, I think because Canadians mostly watch American TV and American movies. Uh, so we tend to have the same uh, words and phrases as them. Um, but uh, I was going to say something. We do have slightly different accents. So that is the, the one difference that you will see. Um, let's see here. Question from Gabrielle Decker or Gabriel Decker. Hey Bob, Gabriel from Brazil. I'm a farmer. Cool. So a uh, big shout out to anyone who's a farmer. I love it. Um, says here, I'm a farmer in Santa Catarina, southern Brazil, and I would like to know what farmers do for a living in Canada during severe winter. So if you have cows or chickens, they are all in barns during the winter. So you are still doing chores. You are still doing your normal job on the farm uh, every day. Um, so you do have to do all that. We don't have anything growing, but in the summer we store everything we can in the barn so that we have things to feed to our animals. So we are still going to the barn uh, two or three times a day in order to feed the livestock, to feed the animals. And if you have to collect eggs from chickens or maybe you have to milk the cows, uh, so that's what they do uh, as, as winter comes. It's kind of a fun time, winter. Uh, Renata Mayumi has a question here. 
Renata Mu Mayumi says, how long have you been teaching? So I started teaching high school uh, in 1996. So in 1996, I started teaching, but I've taught part-time and full-time during that the last 23 or so years. Um, I have done teaching, but I also did computer tech support for the school that I was working in. So I have taught since 1996. Now the next question will probably be, how old are you? I'm not gonna tell you guys. <laughs> Let's see here. I, if I want to check my students, their answer, correct or not. Uh, oh, Tisa says, okay. If I want to check my students, if I want to check my students' answers to see if they are correct or not, can I ask who was right? Um, so that depends. If if you have ten students in front of you, and you say what's seven plus three, and then you tell them the answer is ten. <laughs> I don't I don't do math very well, but the answer is ten. Then you could say, okay, who was right? It would probably be more correct to say who had the right answer but you could definitely say who was right. You could say, okay, the answer was 10, raise your hand, who was right? Who was right? Okay, Johnny, you were right, good job. Um, Anita, you were right, good job. Um, so yeah, you could, you could definitely ask that. Um, let's see, Wallace has a question here. Um, kind of keeping up on the questions, but Wallace, do you have some advice for someone wanting to study abroad, like in the US or Canada, about school or anything like that. So here is my number one piece of advice if you are going to come to Canada uh, or to the United States to study, and that's this. Don't spend too much time with people that speak your own language. So if you are coming to study in an English school and you speak Spanish, and there are other students there that speak Spanish, you can hang out with them a little bit you can be friends with them a little bit, but you really want to spend time, you want to be with the people who speak English. I'm not sure, Wallace, if that was uh, the information you were looking for, but um, I think that that's, that's my advice. So, next question, Beryl Vilson. Hi, Beryl. Uh, or Beryl Vilson, Beryl Vilson. Yes, hi, Bob. How long did you take to post that funny video you, you recorded acting comparisons out? You were awesome and funny, especially when acting the guy jumping up to show the shortest. Um, so it took about two hours to shoot. So when I went outside with my camera, it took about two hours, but it took me about four hours to edit that video on my computer. So that one took a little bit of time. So that was a tricky one uh, to get done. Um, this is a great question. Louisa says, what is the difference between really and pretty? So, first of all, pretty means the same as beautiful in one sense. That is the main definition of pretty. Like, she is a very pretty girl. She is a very beautiful girl. Um, but we also use pretty to um, uh, kind of make something do we use it the same as very? Like, this tea is pretty hot. This tea is very hot. This tea is really hot. Did you hear that? So all of those things mean exactly the same thing. This tea is pretty hot. I don't want to drink too much of it because it's pretty hot right now. It's very hot right now. It's really hot right now. All those mean exactly the same thing. So, a girl can be pretty but we can also say that the tea is pretty hot or the mosquitoes are pretty bad tonight. They're, they're, they're biting me. So it's, uh, it can be used both ways. Let's see here. Next question. This is how I was feeling today a little bit. Uh, Thiago Nizatu says, Hi Bob, I'm from Brazil. What does it mean when people say I am blue? So when someone's feeling blue or when someone says, oh, I'm just blue today, it means they're feeling um, a little bit sad. They're feeling a little bit down. We use that word as well. So you could be feeling a little bit down. Um, it's the opposite of happy, okay? So when you feel, when, you're, when you have the blues or when you're feeling blue, um, it means that you're just feeling a little bit sad. I was a little bit sad today, but everyone's sad for a little bit once in a while, aren't they? Mostly I'm just happy. Um, let's see. Next question, 
Daniel Moriah says, hey Bob, my question is, what is the difference between two, notice it has two O's there, T-O-O, -O, uh, and also. So if Jen came and had some T, she would have some T too. She would have some T also. Um, but we usually use T-O-O -O when we say things like too much or too many. So it's a different form of two. Um, hopefully that made a little sense to you. Um, they can mean kind of the same thing. Um, I'm just checking something here. Yeah, we're not supposed to use to or also at the end of sentences, but we do. Did you notice uh, English speakers break the rules quite a bit? We tend to, we tend to do that. I shouldn't, I shouldn't laugh about it, but we do tend to be. Um, we make rules for our language and then, and then we break those rules. It's not very nice. I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. It's not very nice. I was framed says, it's 2 a.m. here in Rus Russia. Glad to see you, Bob. Glad to see you as well. Thanks for joining. Um, let's see here. Cristiano says, hi, Bob. When should I use will or going to and what is the difference? So um, during the live stream, I will drink tea during the live stream, I am going to drink tea. They do mean the same thing. We tend to use going to way more. Like, um, like tomorrow I will have a nap. Tomorrow I am going to have a nap. I think at one point in time, they were slightly different references to the future, but now we use them almost all the time. We, we usually use will when we're almost promising. Like, yes, tomorrow I will come to your house um, for tea. So, I don't know, we use going to a lot more though. Let's see, Burr Wilson has a statement question here. Hello, Teacher Bob, is it correct to say, is it correct to say that I've been binge watching your playlists of videos? Yes, so let me say that correctly. I would say, hello, Teacher Bob, is it correct to say that I've been binge watching your playlists, plural, of videos. That totally, totally good. There you go. Um, Luis is asking, do you know every week I say I'm going to make a list of books to read and then I don't? Luis Spengler Brazil says, from Brazil says, could you recommend to me some books to read in English? Um, so every, I think every week, hey kitty, there's a cat here and it's scratching my picnic table. Come here. Hey, kitty. Come on. Mm, no cats in the live stream today. Um, I think I recommend The Martian by Andy Weir every week. But what you should do is figure out... Now the cat's knocking the camera around. Um, you should figure out your reading level. And if you need to read young adult fiction, do that. If you can read adult fiction, like if you can read books that are made for people who like me who are native speakers, then just check the... Um, the bestseller list, um, Barnes and Noble bestseller list, New, New York Times bestseller list. Um, let's see. Next one. Lolly Lolly says, unless and if not, do they have the same meaning? So um, let's see. I got to think of an example off the top of my head. How would I use uh, unless? Um, I'm not going to do a live stream unless people come. So that's a totally different way. Um, and that would not be the same as if not. Because if I use if not, I would say, um, I'm going to do a live stream. If not enough people, uh, if not enough people come, then I won't do it. So it's a slightly different construction there. So I'm, I'm going to do a live stream unless no one joins, then I'll do something else. I'm going to do a live stream and if not enough people join, I will do something else. You're going to have to look that one up, Lolly Lolly, because it, it's a little hard to explain um, off the top of my head. They, ha they have slightly different meanings. So, yeah, that's a challenging one. That's a good question. Question of the evening. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Luis has a question. Uh, Luis Spengler says, what's the difference between past, beyond, and besides? Hmm, so interesting. So, so this cup is going past the camera right now, okay? So right now this cup is going past the camera. The camera's right there. The cup is going past the camera. But I'm taking an S off here, but the bug spray is beside the cup, okay? 
So it's beside the cup. Um, and then beyond, let's see. Um, so I'm gonna put this way beyond the cup. That's not a great, that's not a great description, but that's, that's pretty accurate. When you use the word beside with an S on the end, it actually becomes a different type of, uh, has a different meaning. So um, I like to do live streams. Um, besides my day job, I like to do videos for you on YouTube. So it, it, it's more of a different uh, construct there. RJ Farisco says, have you been in my fridge, RJ? RJ Farisco says, do you like soy milk? I do. In fact, I like to put soy milk in my tea, but I don't have any right now. I ran out of soy milk. Um, I also like almond milk. It's very good as well. Because I can't drink cow milk. It makes me sick. It's too bad, eh? Um, as a kid, I, draw, I drank a lot of it. Uh, let's see here. Rodrigo says, Hello, Bob. Could you please explain to me the use of ought to? I would like to alternate it with should. Thank you. So you should exercise every day. You ought to exercise every day. We usually use should. It is far more common um, to say things like, you know, you should eat seven vegetables a day. Um, you could say you ought to eat seven vegetables a day, but should is a stronger way to say it and it's much more common. There's, there's nothing wrong with saying ought to. Uh, it's just, um, it's not used a whole lot. Um, let's see here. Hi, Bob. Brahim, hi, Bob. Brahim here from Morocco. Last time you gave us this channel called Maddie Hapoya, and I've started watching almost all the videos and I understand 100%. Can you give another channel? I don't, but Maddie is great. I think because Maddie uh, originally came from Finland and he's now living in Canada, uh, he speaks very clearly. Um, most of his videos, he talks about cameras and making YouTube videos, so it, it won't be interesting to everyone. Uh, but uh, I don't have another suggestion uh, off the top of my head. I will look uh, for a few more YouTubers who speak clearly. I think that's what some of you um, really need. You need YouTubers who speak, uh, speak clearly. Let's see here. I'm gonna correct this one. Uh, Anderson says, hi, Mr. Bob. Mr. Hi, Bob. Hi, Mr. Bob. I'm Anderson from Brazil. Hi, Anderson. Are you the Anderson that works in a hotel? You should tell me in the chat because I talked to you on Facebook a couple times last year. I'd like to know when I can use the sentence poker face. So a poker face is when you do not reveal your emotions when someone is talking to you. So a poker face, it's from the game of poker. So when you're playing poker, you don't want people to know, if you have good cards playing the game, um, you don't want people to know. So you wanna have a poker face, which is like this. So you show no emotion. So we use the term poker face in real life as well. So we could say, you know, when someone uh, tells you certain news, sometimes people will have a poker face where you can't tell if they were excited or if they were sad by the news. It, we don't use poker face a lot, um, but that's what poker face means. It, it would mean this. If, I, if someone told me something really exciting and I looked like this, that would be a poker face. You can't tell if I'm happy or sad. I look kind of mean, but you can't tell if I'm happy or sad. Uh, so that would be a poker face. Great question. Um, let's see here. This is a good one. Renata Mayumi says, did you native English speakers have trouble memorizing irregular verbs in school? So no, we did not have any trouble because if you talk to an, a regular English speaker, they don't even know what a regular verb is versus an irregular verb. They don't know what a phrasal verb is versus a regular verb. Um, we just learn it as babies and as little kids and it's all normal to us. So um, let's see. Um, I just see in the chat, Abdui says, hi Bob, why not host someone and do a series of conversation rings? So I do have a plan coming up for that, uh, Abdawi. So I do plan to have guests on the Saturday night live stream at some point, uh, but I have another, um, something coming up that I might be doing with another YouTuber uh, where we might have conversations back and forth, but I can't tell you too much right now. Um, let's see here. 
Daniel Mariah says, Bob, last weekend you told us that you didn't have a barbecue. Well, we have one, it's just broken. Um, did you fix the barbecue or get a new one? Hugs from Brazil. So you're correct. <laughs> we do have one, it is broken. We did not fix it. Um, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say this, but we're having a heat wave in Canada. We've had three days of really hot weather. Today it was 34 degrees Celsius. And I know, I know for most of you in other parts of the world, 34 is not hot at all. But uh, most Canadians have been inside in our air conditioned houses as much as possible uh, for the last couple of days. So we haven't even been outside barbecuing. I know some of you like 40 degrees is a normal day. But uh, here we go. Next question. Virginia says, what's the difference between shop and store? Thanks. So here's the thing. A shop and a store are really the same thing. So you can go buy something at a shop. Be careful though, this is gonna sound easy, but it's going to get really difficult. So you can go to a shop and buy something. You can go to a store and buy something. But now, shop has a different meaning because the verb to shop means to go and buy stuff. So I would go and shop in a shop or I would go and shop in a store, okay? So a shop is a building where you can buy things. A store is a building where you can buy things. There's a slight difference depending on what the store owner or shop owner decides to call their, so their shop or store. Um, but you can go shop, the verb to shop. But you can also use store. Uh, when you store something, it means you put it away uh, in the cupboard or you put it away to keep it. So both those words have different meanings. So hopefully I didn't, hopefully I didn't confuse you more. Uh, let's see here. Um, Cheng says, my kid is learning how to swim. I'm trying to teach him how to get his head out of water. Should I use out of water or out of the water? How would you describe the difference? Thank you. I would say you want him to keep his head above water. You want him to keep his head out of the water. Um, it's not incorrect to say keep his head out of water, but when you are in the pool, you would use the because you know what water you are talking about. You are talking about the water that's right in front of you. So I would say you, you want him to swim. This is me swimming. It's called the doggy paddle. Did you know that? Doggy paddle. So this is the doggy paddle. In this, it's a way of swimming. <laughs> and you would want him to keep his head above water or you would want him to keep his head above the water. Uh, either of those uh, would work. Let me back up though. You would want him to keep his head out of the water as well. I, you can see there I used above though. That would probably be a more, a more common. I'm seeing on my screen, I'm seeing myself do the doggy paddle right now. Um, next question. Uh, Jose Rojas. Did I say that right? Rojas? Rojas? Jose Rojas says, what is the difference between sort of and kind of and how can I use those expressions? Um, so they are really just filler words in a way um, because I'm sort of happy right now and I'm kind of happy right now. So all it means is that uh, I'm not completely happy. I'm not a little bit happy, but I'm somewhat happy. And you can use them, they're the same. So this tea is sort of hot. This tea is kind of hot. This tea is a little bit hot. So all of those would mean the same thing. I'm gonna take a sip now. Uh, let's see here. Next one. Let me clean up my list here. The questions are flowing in. I am not going to get through all the questions, everybody. Sorry about that. Um, so if you are uh, submitting a question now, I might not get to it. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, next question is from Mustafa. Mustafa from Bangladesh says, what would you say when a road is sloping downward? Can I call it downhill? So I would say that uh, the road is sloping downhill. It, it's kind of redundant. You're saying the same thing twice, but I would say that. Like this, this road has a real up, uphill slope. This road has a real downhill slope, or this road is sloping downhill. Um, I would say that, and you could just say downhill. This road goes downhill, or this is an uphill road. This is a, this is, that's how, yeah, <laughs> that would work. Um, why, Louise, why is your age a secret? Here's the next question. 
why is your age a secret? It's not actually. If you go back in some of my videos, you could actually figure out how old I am. Um, but I usually don't tell people. I'm in my late 40s, so that's, that's what I tell people. I'm not 50, and I will tell you when I'm 50, but I'm in my late 40s right now. So maybe I'm 46, maybe I'm 47, maybe I'm 48. Maybe I'm 49. Why do I keep it secret? I don't know. We have to have some secrets, don't we? Keeps life interesting. Um, let me clean up my questions here. Um, this is a great question. So, I was framed says, tell us about your experience learning French. How has it been? Um, first of all, let me just clarify. How has it been? How has it been? I pronounced that word two different ways. Sorry about that. Usually I say been. So here's the, the number one thing about learning French. It has helped me teach English, okay? Because, because I am a student of the French language and I have spent a long time learning French. Uh, I spent some time living in Quebec uh, when I was in my early 20s, uh, but I also use the internet and I do a lot of reading and I use a lot of techniques to continue to improve my French. Uh, it has been great, in particular, the last five years has been really, really cool because of the internet. Because I can watch French YouTubers, because I can use, uh, like I finished Duolingo from start to end in French. I don't know if any of you uh, use Duolingo. Um, so technology has made practicing and learning more French easier for me. I can listen to ebooks, audiobooks, I mean, while I'm driving my tractor. Um, so I love the technology. and. All of the things that I use uh, to help me with French, I immediately transfer into teaching you English. So it's very, very cool. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do a video soon on um, how to use YouTube to learn English. And I'm going to take all of the little tips and tricks that I learned learning French with YouTube um, and use them to help you guys. Because a lot of you know a lot how to use YouTube, but there's a few tricks and tips um, that, uh, that could really help you. Next one. Jose, oh, a lot of you use Duolingo. Yeah, I love Duolingo. That was fun. I went from top to bottom. And I started another language in Duolingo, but I, I didn't get very far. Jose says, I visited Canada last year and traveled by bus from Ottawa to Toronto. The bus didn't have a seatbelt. Is it normal in Canada? Isn't there any law enforcement in Canada? So, buses in Canada do not have seat belts, okay? They just don't. Um, I don't know why. I'm not sure how other countries work. I think though, someday in the future, at some point in the future, school buses might have seat belts. But right now, you do not need to read a seat, read. You don't need to wear a seat belt on a bus. Um, but is there law enforcement in Canada? Yes, there is a lot. If you are in a car, make sure you are wearing your seat belt in Canada. Um, because you can get a ticket if you don't wear your seatbelt. Uh, Wendy says, what is the difference between littering, garbage, and trash? So littering is when you throw garbage on the ground. So that's littering. Uh, when it lands on the ground, it becomes litter, okay? Or it becomes garbage or it becomes trash. They are all the same word. But if I was to, um, maybe I'm eating a hamburger and then when I'm done eating, I take the wrapper and I throw it. The act of throwing the hamburger wrapper is littering. The hamburger wrapper, when it lands on the ground, would be called litter. Or we would call it garbage, or we would call it trash, okay? So littering is the act of throwing garbage or trash on the ground. Um, hopefully that makes sense. And don't litter, please, don't litter. Um, let's see here. So that's a grammar question. So I'm gonna skip that one. I tend not to try and explain grammar during the live lesson because it's, there's a lot of videos to learn grammar. I'm sure you can find one. Renata says, could you explain spur someone on? So when you spur someone on, it means you're kind of pushing them to do something, like not physically, you're not actually pushing them, but uh, you're encouraging them, you're pushing them, uh, you're telling them why doing the thing you want them to do would be a good idea. So you're, you're, it's not always positive, but you are um, trying to get someone to do something. I like Tiago Mendez's, he just did a, 
an emoji of books. I like that. It's very cool. Uh, let's see. Next one is from Andrea Pier Pariah. Hi, Bob. Could you use supposed to? Yeah, I'm supposed to explain grammar sometimes, aren't I? I'm supposed to drink so that my throat doesn't get too dry. I'm supposed to put bug spray on so that bugs don't bug me. Hopefully those examples help you just a little bit. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna, so I am skipping grammar questions, people, sorry. Um, let's go to the next one. Lolly says, this tea is pretty. This tea is quite hot, same meaning. Yes, so this is quite hot. This is pretty hot. This is very hot. This is really hot. Um, that was my normal speaking speed, by the way. So this tea is quite hot. It, this tea is pretty hot. This tea is really hot. This tea is super hot. Although someone this week told me I shouldn't use the word super, but I don't know, we use the word super a lot in English. Super hot tea. Um, next question, Cesar says, what grades do you teach at school and how old are the kids do you teach? So the kids I teach are 13 to 18 and I teach high school. So in Canada, that is grade 9 through 12 uh, that I teach. Let's see here. Let me clear out some of the questions that we've covered. Um, let's see here. Tony Chow says, Hi, Bob. Nice to meet you. If I get an interview, so a job interview, um, what questions will HR, human resources, what questions will human resources always be asking in Canada? Uh, I'm not sure. I have not been to a job interview for a long time, uh, but they are definitely going to ask about your education and your former job. Okay, so those are the two things that you're really going to want to know about. And they might ask you about your hobbies, what you do in your spare time for fun. Um, but generally, they're going to be most interested in where you went to school and what your grades were like and what your previous job experience has been. Those are the two things that I would be really, really ready for. Um, next question is from uh, Nanik Borneo. Courage, brave, when do we use these words and sentences? So it's courage and brave, small spelling mistake there. Um, so you have courage, okay? So when you have courage, it means that you are bold. It means that you are not scared. So let's say you are learning to ride a bike as a kid. You have to have courage um, because you, you might be afraid you'll fall, but you have to have courage to overcome that fear. Um, but when we use the word brave, it's the same as having courage. It's just you, you have to be brave, okay? So you have courage, but you have to be brave. So you would say to a kid, uh, you need to be brave, Johnny. You need to overcome your fear of falling. Uh, you need to be brave. So there you go. You can have courage, but you need to be brave. Uh, I think we did this one, the poker face one we did, right? Here's the next one. Andre Cruciante says, hi, Bob. I love your videos. Thank you very much, Andre. Now tell me, what about words like sentiment, sentimental, tempest? Do they sound unusual to you? Mm, they don't sound unusual to me. Um, so in English, we use the word sentiment. Um, so you can have different sentiments, which are different feelings. Um, you can feel sentimental, which means that you are kind of reflecting on the past positively. Like some nights, uh, my wife Jen and I, we will look at pictures of our kids when they were little. And, and you're feeling sentimental. Um, and tempest, we don't use a lot. A tempest is like a big storm. Um, that word is not used uh, very much. Yesterday, there was a fly bugging me. Now there's uh, mosquitoes. Bob the Canadian's live lessons always come with insects, by the way, uh, either flies or mosquitoes. Um, let me see here. By the way, if you're new here, you should subscribe. Or if you are just here, you should give me a thumbs up. I haven't checked how many people are watching. Pretty good, 485. Um, Renata says, Renata Miyami says, your examples are pretty clear. Thank you. That's a great use of the word pretty, by the way. My examples are very clear. My examples are quite clear. My examples are pretty clear. Um, I think I forgot the last one. <laughs> we did a few of those. Um, oh, wait, I did that one already. 
So sometimes people ask their questions twice. So sorry, it takes me a while to get the next question. This is from Luis. Luis says, hi, Bob. Good evening. It's hot there in your region in Canada. Or is it hot there in your region in Canada? Yes. Um, it's cooled off a bit now because it's evening. Um, here in Sao Paulo, Brazil, it was 25 today. Most days of our winter, the temperature is 20 to 30 degrees in your winter. Okay, so your winter is almost as warm as our summer. And, I, and I'm complaining about the heat. I should stop, stop complaining. Thanks for sharing that with me though, Luis. That's cool. Um, let's see here. Hoi from Vietnam says, in spoken English, I've heard native speakers say kind of or like a lot. Why? It's just how we talk. Um, in some ways, they're transitional filler words, okay? Um, so, I was just going to say like, like, <laughs> and I, there I just said it. We don't even really think about it. Um, uh, like when I start to talk, the word like comes out or the word so comes out. Um, so, it really is, in a sense, a filler word. Um, your other question, though, um, kind of. We use kind of... Uh, and sort of and uh, I think just as um, it's not that's less of a filler I earlier said that kind of and sort of were fillers but um, we use it just to when we want to say a little bit so the tea is kind of kind of hot I don't know why we I don't really know why we say like all the time um, we sound like we're from California when we say that um, let's see here our smartphones, Renata Mayumi says, our smartphones and iPhones expensive in Canada. Yes, um, my phone was quite expensive. I actually bought it used from my brother. Um, but yes, uh, in Canadian dollars, a phone would cost anywhere from $200 up to $1,500. Okay, so the brand new iPhone is probably $1,200. I think the Google Pixel 3 is about $1,300. So. Um, those are your prices for smartphones in Canada. Leo from Brazil says, what's the difference between, so notice I corrected that there, what's the difference between a t-shirt, a shirt, and a blouse? So first of all, um, a t-shirt and a shirt, this is a t-shirt, no buttons, no collar, okay? So there's no collar on the shirt, there's no buttons on the front. Um, this is a t-shirt, and it's short sleeve. We do have long sleeve t-shirts, but generally, a t-shirt has short sleeves. Sometimes it has a pocket, okay? A t-shirt can have a pocket. Um, we used to say in Canada um, that people who smoked bought t-shirts with pockets so they could keep their smokes, they could keep their cigarettes there. Um, a shirt is anything that you wear above your waist on your body. Like anything can be a shirt. So a t-shirt, long sleeve shirt, dress shirt, there's all different kinds of shirts. A blouse in particular is a shirt that is a nicer shirt and it's worn by a woman, okay? So men don't wear blouses, uh, only women wear blouses. It's a hard word to say, isn't it? A blouse. So that's your difference uh, right there. Uh, let's see here, Clive says, hi Clive, it's nice to see you. Uh, I still, Clive was uh, here months ago when there was less than 485 people, but hi Clive. Hi Bob, great to see you. Can you advise us on how to listen to the pronunciation of movies? Thank you. So a couple things about movies. Um, some people say you shouldn't use subtitles, but I don't think that's a good idea if you need them. You can turn them on and off while you're watching the movie. But number one, in order to understand a movie, to understand the pronunciation, use subtitles. Number two, if you can slow the movie down just a little bit, if you can slow it down 10%, it can really help you. And then the third thing which can make the movie boring is to watch the movie in your own language first and then re-watch the movie in English uh, afterwards. So those would be three things, Clive, that I would recommend uh, that might help you a little bit. Uh, let's see here. This is Aramis. Hello, Bob. I am Aramis from Cuba. Hi, Aramis. Uh, and I'm new here. Well, welcome. Uh, it's good to have you. Uh, and I'm wanting to learn with you. I want to know the correct use of in order to and what does it mean? Thanks in advance. Well, here's a great example. You are watching this video in order to learn English. So you are watching videos on YouTube 
in order to practice your English. So that's how you use in order to. Um, I am drinking this tea in order to keep my throat feeling good so I can talk for one hour. Last week I drank water, it wasn't as good. The tea is definitely better. In order to, uh, to be able to talk for one hour, I drink tea. That was a lot of examples for you there, Aramis. Hopefully that helped a little bit. Uh, and again, welcome uh, to the channel. Let's see here. Cheng says, could you tell the difference between power cut, power outage, and blackout? So when the power is cut, it means that someone went and uh, they actually turned off the power, okay? So when you cut the power to a building, you flip a big lever and the power is cut. So a person does that, okay? But a power outage or a blackout, they're the same thing, uh, is usually caused by a storm, a natural disaster, maybe something at the power plant blew up, you know? Um, so power, when power is cut, a person does it. I, I'm just doing this because in the movies there's always a big lever and then they cut the power. <laughs> Um, but if there is a blackout or a power outage, they are the same thing. It's usually caused um, by something else. Here, sometimes people will have an accident and they'll hit uh, an electrical pole and then we'll have the power will be out as well. Um, let's see. Lou says, OMG, which means oh my God, but it's actually kind of a swear word in Canada. Did you know that? OMG isn't, but oh my God can be. Um, I've always been in the air conditioning and it was freezing. Oh, so what Lou is saying is, I'm assuming Lou is from a country where it's generally warm and everyone is used to it. Um, and when they go into an air conditioned building, it's freezing cold. <laughs> um, let's see here. I think I answered this one. Let me clean up some stuff here. Um, Vlad. Hi, Vlad. How are you? Hi, Bob. I have problems to pronounce, to correctly pronounce 30. Could you help me? Thank you. So, th look, you see my tongue? Th th so, this is gonna, this is going to look weird, but I'll just turn sideways. Like, I, I'll exaggerate. So, I'm, I'm pushing air out of my mouth with my tongue almost out of my mouth between my teeth. So, 30, 30, and then I pull my tongue in. So, if you just go, th so push air out, tongue between your teeth sticking out a little bit. Does, does this look weird? <laughs> 30. That's how we do it. Hey, Todd, give me a smiley face if that looked fun, funny to you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Jakob or Jacob. Uh, let's see here. Jacob Herda says, Hi, Bob. Could you explain to me what is the difference between the words correctly and properly? If they are not similar, that is which situation can I use? And they are very similar. So when I speak, I try to say every word correctly. When I speak, I try to say every word properly. So correctly and properly in most situations mean the same thing, okay? So when I make, a, uh, when I make an English lesson, I try to do everything correctly. I try to do everything properly. So. A slightly different meaning, but generally both of them mean that you're trying to do the best job that you can in the best way that you can. Uh, there's a smiley face from Todd. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Renata Miami says, what exactly do you keep in a silo? How uh, could you maybe perhaps show yours to us how it works and stuff? We'd appreciate that very much. I don't actually use my silos. So uh, what? you are asking about they're way over there the those two big things over there um, they are called silos I'm just gonna make sure my camera's still set up right they are called silos and uh, when I was younger when my parents lived here we kept uh, hay wet hay and wet corn in them that's what we kept in them so uh, not really wet but wet enough so they would ferment. That was, uh, you'll have to look that word up, ferment. I'm trying to get my camera back. I like to have my camera set up correctly and properly. <laughs> so, um, Brahim has a question here. Let's see here. 
Um, it says, don't you? You're really enjoying this class, don't you? Hey guys. Um, Brahim, what's the difference between shopping and shipping? So shopping is when you go to the store and buy things. Shipping is when you put stuff in a box and you tape it shut and you send it somewhere, either with a, a courier or in the mail. So that's how, that's how you would do it. Um, let me see here. Let me find the next question. What's the answer? So Luis Bengler from Brazil says, how do you answer this question? What's up? Thank you. I've been learning a lot from you. So generally, if I, if I get to work and I say, hey, what's up? People can say not much. Um, they'll say, oh, uh, uh, I'm a little bit tired today or I got a busy day ahead of me. Um, oh, I, I just have to work today and then I'm going out later. So when people say what's up, they're asking how you're feeling, but they're also asking what you're planning to do. So, um, so what's up at lunch? Are you doing anything fun? Um, you would describe what you're doing. But if people just say what's up, most of the time people respond by saying not much. So it's, it's not really a great conversation, is it? What's up? Not much. What's up with you? Oh, not much. That's like a, a real conversation in English. Uh, let's see here. Um, this is from Luis. Bob, I realize that the Americans and Canadians living here in Brazil have much more difficulty learning Portuguese than Brazilians do learning English. Curious. So here's my theory on this. It seems to me that people from other countries are very open to learning another language. Many people already speak one or two languages uh, and to learn another language is fun for them and enjoyable. Canadians and Americans for the most part only speak one language and even though they learn a little bit of French in school or a little bit of Spanish, um, they're not as comfortable learning another language. Um, I think it's cultural, I really do. Uh, I think people from Brazil are just maybe a little more outgoing and they already just love learning languages, um, so it's easier, but yeah. I notice it a lot in some of my students that um, they speak English and uh, they're not that open to learning another language. It's too bad. Everyone should speak two, if not three languages, I think. I think the world would be a better place if everyone spoke three languages. So, um, Chung Yu just mentioned that native speakers don't know about regular or irregular verbs. I read an article on snuck and sneaked. If you usually use snuck, would you mark sneaked wrong? So, yesterday I snuck into the building so that I could steal some money. I didn't, by the way. I don't steal things. Um, and he, he, yeah, we don't say sneaked very much. I, I'm not sure I would mark it wrong, but it, it's, it's kind of a strange thing. Like we would say snuck, like he snuck into the building. Um, so snuck, by the way, is like you really carefully open the door. You're somewhere you're not supposed to be uh, and you sneak in. Um, let's see here. Renata says, um, your age doesn't matter. What matters is your heart. It's always young and willing to teach us. Hee <laughs> hee. Thank you. Yes, I'm young at heart. So hopefully this heart works for a long, long time. We'll see. So how deep is the river near your place? So this is from Kazuyo Yamashita. It says, hi, Bob and Todd. My question is, how deep is the river near your place? Of course, it depends on the weather, but how about the deepest? The river in the middle of the river. Does everyone see the river back there? Uh, it's probably up to my chin if I stood in the middle. Okay, it's not a very deep river, but the bottom is mud. So you can't walk in the river because you would sink in the mud. So mud is really, really wet dirt. Uh, so I would say the river is about a meter and a half, um, almost two meters deep, um, usually about to here, which would be, yeah, probably a meter and a half, something like that. Now everyone knows how tall I am. <laughs> Um, so all the way uphill. Sorry, I'm mumbling a bit. Jimmy says, can I say the road is all the way uphill to London? Is uphill correct? Yes. If you are walking uphill all the way, you would say that the road is all the way, uh, all the way uphill to London. Or you could say it's uphill all the way. Uh, that might actually sound a little bit better. Both are correct though. Um, again, I'm going to apologize to people because um, I'm not going to get through all the questions, but I will try my best. Here we go. Luis, 
Bob, the French spoken in Canada is pretty different from the French in France. Yes, they can understand each other, but they probably don't speak full speed when they are talking to each other. And they will probably both speak more common French when they are having a conversation. So if I was from Quebec, I would probably use very correct French, very clear French if I was speaking to someone from France and vice versa. So um, let's see. Educav says, are there more than one way to pronounce with and thing? I do not think so. I say with and I say thing. Maybe if we're talking quickly, like I went to the store with my brother, it might sound a little different, um, but um, they are definitely pronounced with and thing. Um, Daniel says, Bob, here's another question. I can understand natives very well, but sometimes I feel that my vocabulary is too poor for during the conversation. How can I grow if I can't speak every day? It's, you have to find a way to speak every day. That is probably the key. Um, the bonus for me, the benefit for me as a French speaker is I teach French, so I have to teach, I have to speak it every day. And there are five students in my school who speak French fluently. So I can just talk to them whenever I want to. And I usually talk to one of them every day. Um, so for you learning English, Daniel, you have to find a way to speak English every day. Uh, it will just get easier. Um, hire someone on Skype if you have the money. That would be a great. Um, let's see here. Aramis from Cuba says, just want to say hi and test this form. It worked, Aramis. Everything's working great. Um, oh, I think I did that one. Let me clear out the ones that I did. Um, we went over this one a week ago and it, it is a tricky one. Hoi from Vietnam says the difference between a home and a house. So a house is the building. Okay. So the building that you live in is called your house. You can also call it your home. Um, but home also just refers to, um, they, there's a saying home is where the heart is. Um, so your home is um, where you and your family live regardless of whether it's a house or an apartment or a tent in the woods, okay? Um, so if you have a home, it is the place where you live. Um, but a house is the actual building, like a, you have an apartment, you have a building, uh, you have a camper van, um, all of those can be your home, but they are different kinds of buildings or dwellings is the other word. Uh, let's see here. Um, Nanny, sorry for the pause there, everyone. Nanny says, how do you use I supposed to? I'm your fun. Oh, it's fun watching your videos every day. Thanks, Nanny. Um, so when you're supposed to do something, you, you, you should do it. That's, that's basically how it works. So uh, if you have to do something, you should do it. Um, you're supposed to do it. Um, it means that, so every day I'm supposed to, um, Let's see, what am I supposed to do every day? Do I have any requirements? Um, before I start my tractor, I'm supposed to check the oil. That's a good sentence for you. So here is the question. Renata says, I can understand you pretty naturally. Am I advanced already? So a couple things happen. I speak a little more slowly, although tonight I'm speaking pretty fast. Um, I usually try to speak very clearly. Uh, and the more you listen to one person, the easier it is to understand that one person. So um, you may have listened to me enough that things are becoming clear. So um, let's see. So Nick says, what's the opposite of get used to? So when you get used to something, it means that um, it's, it's not foreign to you anymore. It's not a mystery to you anymore. Um, it's not something that you don't know how to do. So you get used to going to work every day. Uh, and eventually you enjoy it. The opposite, honestly, Nick, the opposite is to not get used to. Like I can't get used to um, eating healthy. I can't get used to it. So the opposite is just to use can't in front. There is no real opposite of get used to. Um, Renata says, your channel is growing significantly fast. Are you proud of yourself? We all love watching you. So yes, I. Am I proud of myself? Yes, I'm very happy to see my channel grow. Um, it's pretty fun. I, I was working hard. I do like to see growth, but I think more I just, 
Uh, I like to make the videos and I'm glad so many people enjoy them. Uh, I'm a little bit, not unhappy, but what's hard for me is I used to respond to every comment, but there's too many comments now and I can't. So I'm excited that my channel is growing, but we have what we would call growing pains. Um, growing pains are when something grows fast and then uh, there's you're you're ninety nine percent happy but one percent sad because it was fun when I had time every day to answer people's questions in the comments and now I find I don't have as much time I do read all the comments and I put little hearts when I can but yes thanks Renata let's see let's see um, we're gonna do this as the last question I was framed how do I have to spend my time on listening speaking reading and writing in English. All things in one day or divide them each one day. I would do them all in one day. Like if you can, I would do a little bit of reading, a little bit of writing, a little bit of speaking, a little bit of listening and learn some vocabulary. If you want, let's say you have one hour every day. What you can do is you can focus on one thing. So let's say on Mondays you read for half an hour. And then you do some listening, reading, sorry, then you do some listening, speaking, writing, and vocabulary for the next half hour. And then the next day you listen for half an hour and you do the other four. Um, but I think it's really good. You don't have to do this. This is just my idea. Um, it's good to do all of them every day, all five of them. Um, so folks, we're gonna uh, wrap this up. It has been one hour. Thank you so much. I have to apologize to those who I didn't get to your questions. Again, if you're new here, you can subscribe. There will be a new video on Tuesday and there will be a live lesson next Friday. Um, I think next Saturday night uh, there will be a video though. I don't think there will be a lesson. I, I have to check my calendar. Um, thanks again for watching. Don't forget tomorrow you can watch this live lesson or you can watch this lesson again and there will be subtitles at the bottom in English. For those of you that need that, I know a lot of you like to come back the next day, turn the subtitles on and go back and watch small parts of it. Um, but thank you so much for coming. Um, again, uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for shouting out the name of your country when you ask questions. It's really cool for me uh, to see all the different countries represented here. I know at this time slot, I get a lot of people uh, uh, far west of here who are just getting up and I get a lot of people far south who are in the same time zone as me and then we don't usually get a lot of Europeans I know there's a bunch of you in here but you're up really late if you're from Russia or a European country it's probably super late but again thank you so so much for watching uh, again uh, subtitles will be up tomorrow if you want to re-watch this subscribe thumbs up uh, and look for another video on Tuesday Bob the Canadian here have a great weekend uh, I hope you are resting. I hope you are doing enjoyable things. I hope you are having a good, good evening or morning or whatever. And if you're in Europe or Russia, you, you should go to bed now. It's late. You need to get a good night's sleep. Uh, see you next time. I'm going to press.